I tuned in from Mississippi, I was 10 years old, but WNOE was on the radio. Horseshoe tabs on my shoes, and sparks did fly. I fell in love with them blues, and in love is where I die. A WDIA, Memphis, Tennessee, played rhythm and blues, and that were fine by me. That old Delta beat kept my feet tapping all day. I fell in love with them blues, and in love is where I stay. I fell in love with them blues. I had them bad, worse than any woman a man ever had. I go crazy, that's what I do. When I couldn't find me no rhythm and blues, Del Rio, Texas, the Wolf Man howl. Late at night we was on the prowl. Them on the blues so sad, I wanna cry. I fell in love with them blues and in love is where I die. Welcome back to Music from the Shady Side. This is season two. We've got a great season lined up this year. And one of our guests is the big juve himself, uh, Virgil Brawley. Virgil, welcome back to town, son. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's a fun weekend for us. Yeah, we've got a we've got a big a big day ahead of us and a big night ahead of us tonight. We do. Don't we? We I do. appreciate you taking out being able to carve a little time out for us to sit here on the shady side and visit for a That's few. That's good. Minutes. I love the shady shady side well, of good, the street too. Good. But Virgil, the thing I wanted to ask you was, you and I are basically the same age. I think you're a year older than me, and and we came up during the British invasion. How in the world did you discover the blues when the rest of us were trying to learn how to play Love Me Do? I didn't discover it then as much as I did a whole lot later on. Although the first song that Don and I ever did in the Brutes was Howlin' Wolf's Little Red Rooster. And we learned it, of course, by way of the Rolling Stones. We yeah. learned it right off of a Rolling Stones record at Don's house. Uh, it was just now that I look back on it it's just almost strange how close the blues was to us and we knew nothing about it and made no effort to go find out yeah. uh, to go, I had no reason to go to the Delta when I, when, when I was a teenager yeah. and driving fast you know <laughs> uh, but years later Years later, after, of course, we was raised on rock and roll in the 70s, a lot of good rock and roll, and I loved it all, loved the, the blues, too. was always a Freddie King fan. Mm. Uh, and so time passes, and when I went back to playing, after about an 11-year hiatus in the 80s, I didn't play, and in the early 90s when I went back, 
it seemed I always had a love for the blues from just when I heard it. It did something to me. It moved me. When I heard B.B. King, it did something to me. When I heard Freddie King, it did something different than just hearing some top 40 band from the 60s that I can't remember their name now because, <laughs> you know, that wasn't significant to my soul, I don't guess. Whereas somehow the blues was, whether I knew it or not, or wanted it to be or not. Because the blues kind of, to me, it picks you. There's plenty of people that pick the blues, but you can tell the difference in the ones that pick the blues and the ones that the blues pick them. Uh, that's what I was waiting to hear. You know, there's the money shot right there. That's the one we were. Uh, there's that's a, the, there's that's a the, difference, yeah. and I waited for it to pick me. Yeah. I was in Texas and has was going through a divorce. <clears throat> And That'll give you the blues some, right somebody there, talked right somebody talked me into going to a jam, uh, like an open jam at night in Brenham, Texas. And they had asked me for a long time, and I had no interest in doing it. And finally, one time I went, took an acoustic guitar, made an absolute fool out of myself. <laughs> went back the next week, made the same mistakes. But they kept telling me, hey, man, come back. And the third week, I'm like, I'm not doing what I did last time. And I went and got the old Gill guitar out from under the bed, my little black face Fender Deluxe, and went to town. And you got to do three songs. And I did two songs, and I don't even remember what they were. And I did an old song written by a guy from McCone named Steve Blaylock. And it's called 53 Buick Blues. And I did that song, and froze the crowd and it was just strange I was it was actually a crossroads because I can remember so plain going now what are you going to do <laughs> and I didn't mean what next song am I going to do I know I meant, what do you do with this well, horse what I really you realize it, and it gives me chill bumps right now it's like man I believe I can do this you know <laughs> I believe I can pull this off and that's kind of where that started, and that was right. 25 years ago for actually homing in on the blues or aiming toward the blues, you know. Yeah. So I submerged myself in it more than I ever had, yeah. and I started playing blues and started a band in Texas. And then in 96, I moved to Mississippi, and about six months later, I started what was known for 17 years as a Juvenators. We'll talk about the Juvenators in a minute. We're listening, we're talking to Virgil Brawley, and we're fixing to listen to one of the Big Juve's tunes uh, right now, and we'll be back on the other side to uh, pick it up with Virgil. I found a way to show you my feelings. I hope to make my point quite clear. You're going to see something revealing Next time you pass by here You left me sad and lonely and Just to prove it's true Going to leave you a message An obvious clue Tomorrow morning I'm going to paint my White House blue That happy home that we once had Was just a run-down shell of a shack it got overgrown with the blues so bad Waiting on you to come back Tired of sitting around wondering what to say to you I got a big old paintbrush I know just what to do Tomorrow morning I'm gonna paint my White House blue When you pass by tomorrow You'll get a picture of how I feel See that I'm sinking in sorrow From a hole in my heart that won't heal There's gonna be a monument in memory of you A life-size portrait of the pain you put me through Tomorrow morning I'm gonna paint my White House blue Tomorrow morning I'm gonna paint my White House blue Tomorrow morning, gonna pay my White House blue. You know, Virg, you mentioned a minute ago the uh, Juvenators, and how long were you with them? 
Well, uh, two of the guys that was in there were with me. George Vance and Bird Lovell were with me for 17 years. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've got a couple of the old uh, Juvenator albums, the live one in... Uh, at the shoot, Mercury in, Room in, in, in yeah, Houston, in Texas. Houston, Texas. Yeah, yeah. All right, so what are you, you... But, all right, so you retire, you move to uh, Mountain Home. Mountain View, Arkansas. Martin, Mountain View, Arkansas. You're living in a cabin out there. A bungalow, I call a it. A bungalow. And instead of retiring, you, what did you do? I went there, and I was didn't realize how I kind of burnt out on just playing every night. By I was, I hung those guitars on the wall, and I looked at them for three months. I didn't play guitar at all. And then I picked the guitar up, and I started trying to further my guitar education by learning a lot of scales and a lot of things that I had never done in the blues because basically blues is pentatonic scale. Mm. And I started trying to expand my territory a little bit on that and uh, got to taking some mandolin lessons just for something to do. Comes to find out the man resident mandolin teacher is actually a bass player. And he comes out of the old Bruce Springsteen school up there in New Jersey. Friends with all those guys that played with him. And then I run into a drummer through somebody else. And he had played with Jimbo Mathis for four mm -hmm. years. Jimbo. And he knew all that kind of hill country blues sort of stuff. And he got me involved in that, and we got Albie to play some bass with us, and I had never played three-piece before, and I ventured on a new path and really didn't know what I was doing and kept getting approval from the drummer that it was working, so we just kept working on it. And uh, before you knew it, we had written 10 or 11 new songs, and we went in the studio in March of 2015, and Cut a new record. I went to retire. Now I'm in another band. And the name of this band is? The Silamo Trio. All right. And you can get these on your you album. You can get on. this on at a, a, you can look at it on YouTube, but you can get it at a CD Baby. Yeah. Uh, iTunes. Places like that. Yeah. iTunes. It's on all the yeah. digital all the, yeah. uh, places. Yeah. You got any uh, plans to record a, a solo album anytime soon again? Well, you know, I recorded a solo album in 2009, Bottle Tree. Right. And, it's got my uh, favorite song on it, by the way, that you're playing yeah, on today. And, uh, I, uh, like I said, I got involved with this band and wrote all that. I haven't really thought about a solo album, although my wife wants me to do an album of gospel songs. So I don't know if that'll ever happen. And that would show me a different take for Big Juve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to listen to the Big Juve play one more. We are on the shady side. We're sitting in the uh, studio here on the shady side. We've moved from the living room to the studio now that, for this season. We hope that you're going to stay with us. Uh, we've got uh, three more shows to do or four more shows to do. And uh, we hope you'll stay with us and join us again for music from the shady side. Decorated the bottle tree 
with dead soldiers I had empty A spirit that has long haunted me She got the spirits She got the bottles Got dead soldiers hanging from a tree Well, them bottles Gonna watch out for her Dead soldiers gonna see the end of me If you ever walking Out in the country And you pass by some bottles on a tree They're being guarded By dead soldiers A spirit that will never set you free a spirit that will never set you free a spirit that will never set you free